Hello everybody and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name is Alex Hunter and I'll be your Sherpa on this adventure. And today we find ourselves in Mumbai. Before we get into the nitty gritty, there's something I want to mention. Mumbai may feel overwhelming at first, but in the few days that we've been here, I don't think neither Greg nor I have ever felt unsafe. Sure, you take the same precautions as you would in any other city, but even as we walked around all over the city with quite a lot of camera equipment, people only ever came up to us to geek out over Greg's equipment. Ca cameras, sorry, that sounded bad. <laughs> Mumbai is served by Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport. It's Brand new, only opened in 2014. It's clean, modern, spacious, full of great amenities, and not too far out of town, only about 30 kilometers. The easiest way to get from the airport into central Mumbai is a prepaid taxi. Just go downstairs from arrivals and you'll find the prepaid taxi desk. Tell the folks where you're going, they'll quote you a price, but never pay more than 450 to 600 rupees for your journey. They'll give you a paper coupon with a taxi registration number written on it. Head outside, find that taxi, and jump in. The journey to Mumbai city center can take from 45 minutes to two hours depending on traffic. Don't pay anything extra when you arrive at your destination because any fees or tolls are covered in the price you negotiated back at the airport. Mumbai is one of the most densely populated places on earth. 22 million people crammed into a space half the size of London. So getting around can sometimes be an adventure, but it is doable, it is really cheap, and sometimes it can be a lot of fun. The railways are the nervous system of India. A byproduct of British colonialism, the very first railways in India started here in Mumbai. After she gained her independence, India embraced, optimized, and expanded her railway system to extraordinary proportions. And Mumbai, with its extensive network covering the city, is a great way to experience that. Most people get around town using the suburban rail network, otherwise known as locals. Oh, the trains, not the people. It is incredibly cheap to travel by train in India, especially second class, but I strongly recommend that you splurge on a first class ticket. This isn't about elitism, this isn't about snobbery, it's about survival. Ask anybody here and they'll tell you the same thing. The second class carriages are designed for the seasoned Mumbai commuter who's used to the jabbing and jostling and jam packing that happens day in and day out. As a tourist, you can buy the aptly named tourist ticket. It costs 275 rupees or around two pounds 50 and allows you to travel in first class on all three suburban lines all day. It's a good idea to figure out where the first class compartment is before the train arrives, lest you get caught swimming upstream when the train actually pulls in. The easiest way to figure out where the first class compartment will be is to look for the walls and pillars that are painted with red and yellow diagonal stripes. Avoid using local trains during rush hour, first class or otherwise. Rush hour is around 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. for trains heading towards South Mumbai and 5.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for trains in the opposite direction. If you have to travel during rush hour, then avoid at all costs standing anywhere near the train doors. Otherwise, you will be swarmed by a stampede of every man for himself trying to get off the train while you're trying to get on. And if you're anywhere near Mumbai Central Station or Chhatrapati Savaji Terminus as it's known, don't just run to your platform. Come outside and look at the building. That mixture of traditional Indian architecture and Victorian Gothic revival is absolutely stunning. And it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So give yourself a few minutes and just take a look. Crossing the road in Mumbai can be uh, exciting to say the least. I'm, I'm going to attempt it. Uh, and it's only Saturday. This isn't exactly rush hour traffic, but there's a crosswalk and traffic lights, but those seem merely suggestions and not uh, the law, so. <laughs> wow. I think I aged like five years in that process. 
think I pooed a bit. Taxis are cheap and plentiful. 10 pounds will get you from one end of the city to the other, no problem. That said, the black and yellow cabs can often, not always, but often be a little on the older side. And if you do decide to take a taxi, new or old, insist on a metered journey, using the meter inside the cab as opposed to uh, a pre-negotiated fare, which can often suddenly inflate at the end of your journey. Now, obviously, most of the taxi drivers here are super honest, but the less scrupulous ones tend to cluster around train stations and airports looking for Johnny Sucker and Janie Tourist. Another great way to get around Mumbai is Uber, which is surprisingly prevalent in the city. There's a few options. Uber Black, which is your regular car, air-conditioned, comfortable, usually with you in about 10 minutes that we found. Or Uber Wi-Fi, which is exactly as it sounds, a car equipped with Wi-Fi. And in this city, which doesn't have a whole lot of open Wi-Fi spots, can be really actually very helpful. If you want to arrive in Mumbai ready to chat, then check out our friends over at italki, an online language learning service that connects you one-on-one -on -one with language teachers from all over the world. And if you haven't booked your flight to Mumbai, then I definitely recommend checking out Hipmunk, the fastest and easiest way to book online travel. Check out the show notes below for a direct link to find great fares to Mumbai. Around every corner in Mumbai, you are assaulted by a new smell. Some awful, but some incredible. And almost invariably, the incredible smells come from the street food here. You may look at Mumbai street food and think, maybe I shouldn't, but trust me, just do it. You will be rewarded with cheap, amazingly delicious food. A few things to remember to really make the most out of your Mumbai street food experience. When you see a crowd gathered around a stall, get in line. There is no better endorsement than popularity. Also, make sure that the snack that you're enjoying is cooked right in front of you and that they're using bottled or filtered water. I really wanted the opportunity to meet Kalyan from the finallychop.net, which is easily the best food blog in Mumbai, to kind of give us a sense of what we should be eating, how we should eat it, where we should go to find the best eats in, in Mumbai. So thanks a lot for... I'm so great we could meet up. Yeah, it's me too, me too. So tell us a little bit about well, where we are and generally the kind of the Mumbai food scene. So Mumbai is a very interesting city because it's, it's probably the most cosmopolitan of uh, Indian cities and you've got people from all over India coming here to work and now there are a lot of international expats as well. And uh, there are different parts of Mumbai in which different communities live, like some people from Gujarat or from South India. So we are right now in Bandra East, Kalanagar, and, and this is an area which uh, is a very core Maharashtran area, so which is the state to which uh, Mumbai b belongs to. So you're actually in the heart of Mumbai. And it's really interesting because this is a very traditional area, and just a five minute cab ride or an auto ride, we, that's what we call tuk-tuks here, is a Bandra Kulla complex, which is like the new central business district. And, and you've got all the swank uh, restaurants over there. All the new openings are over there. Just five minutes away? Just five minutes wow. away. So it's, it's a completely different world. That's, that's new Mumbai, that's modern Mumbai. And, and this is what Mumbai was and is. So this here is a place which I come to whenever I come here to work for breakfast. And, and you get local Maharashtrian uh, snacks over here. It's run by Mr. Kamle, who used to be a sari salesman, and his wife Prabha. So she actually does all the cooking. And, uh, and then she goes to the Taj Hotel and, uh, in Kulaba and she makes rotis for the staff canteen. So I come here every morning and eat. There are two dishes which are very nice. So this is uh, the poha and you must try it out. And, and this is the upma. Uh, this, this tastes better when it's hot. It's, it's like a semolina. So this is made with rice flakes. Well, I was wondering what the texture was. It's delicious. It's rice flakes. And the thing is, when you're having it with the peanuts, peanuts. and the curry leaves, yep. there's a nice textural mm. contrast. Good so, way to start your um, Absolutely. Day. So this is our version of, uh, say, a bagel and lox in New York. And if you come here around 8.30 or 9, there's a queue of people who come here and, and have breakfast. And, and then you can see they, they come here for tea or, or chai. We, we love our tea here, and there's a lot of milk in the tea. Okay. And, and they also put ginger and uh, cardamom, and it's called a masala chai. So this is the cutting chai. And, and it's milk-based, and it's got cardamom and ginger in it. Cardamom. And lots of lots of sugar. In fact, it's hot tea, but it cools you down. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. So you described this to me as the Mumbai equivalent of the New York hot dogs. Yeah. What is it? It's fairly new. If you read up Wikipedia, it says that it was discovered in the 1970s. Oh, and it's wow. called the Batata Vara and the Vara Pao. 
So you've got this, um, you've got this little croquette, which is like mashed potatoes spiced, covered with gram flour and deep fried, and and that's put into the bun, the pao, and you have a bite of this, and you have a bite of the green chili, and then you follow it up with some cutting chai, and this is what keeps Mumbai on the go. It's it's like really cheap. If you put the two of them together, it's about twenty rupees. It's very filling. And you should always choose a shop like this where there's a big crowd, big crowd. and where people are frying things uh, constantly and, and it's everything's made fresh on the counter. Like I come here and eat regularly, I've never fallen sick, I've never feel, felt burpy or, or anything <laughs> at all. So yeah. So you must try this. It's amazing. So you take a bite? Yeah, so just take a bite like you would of a burger. How do you find it's it? Delicious. Isn't it? Absolutely delicious. And so with the street food of Bandra East conquered. We say goodbye to Kalyan and head to Naraman Point to end the day with some tali. So a really great way to experience a whole bunch of different Indian flavors is with tali, which for one of a better comparison is like Indian tapas. You get a whole bunch of different Indian flavors and dishes, little mini dishes on this beautiful layout. And the idea is to combine salt, sweet, bitter, sour, astringent, spicy, all in one experience. And it's, it's really, not only is it delicious, it's beautiful as well. And this is all vegetarian and you can't go wrong with this. So I definitely recommend trying out a tali. India uses the rupee and generally comes in notes between 1 and 1,000 rupees. Coins come between 1 and 10 rupees and ATMs are widely available. Now credit cards and debit cards are widely accepted in Mumbai, especially in restaurants and in some of the chain stores. But if you want to hit the streets and indulge in some of that amazing street food, cash is king. By Western standards, Mumbai is incredibly cheap. You can eat like a king for under 5 US dollars. but. Hotel bars and restaurants will charge you five to ten times what a local restaurant or bar will charge you. And for more on what things cost, let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around 100 rupees. A beer will cost you 110 rupees. And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you can't get here. But the local equivalent, the chicken Maharaja Mac, is 110 rupees, or just over one pound. And now on to our good friend, Tipping. It's actually relatively simple here. If you're at a sit-down restaurant, tip 5 to 10% unless a service charge has been added to your bill. And a quick note on that, the service charge goes to the restaurant and its staff, the service tax goes to the government. If you feel like doing some shopping in markets like Crawford Market, it's okay to haggle, but only if you're serious about buying something. This is the wealthiest city in India. There are more millionaires and billionaires here than any other city in Central Asia. It has the highest GDP of any city in Central, Southern, or Western Asia. But take a look around. Among that wealth and that opulence, poverty. You can walk through a slum and the next minute into a Bentley dealership. The divide between rich and poor has never felt greater than here in Mumbai. And yet somehow, in spite of this economic inequality, the city works. The collective cacophony that's generated by the ebb and flow of 22 million people crisscrossing the city can seem intimidating. But I've noticed something, and I think that you will too. Everywhere we go, people have been so friendly. No matter where we are, we've been greeted with smiles and salutations. It's a wonderful feeling, and I think that's something Mumbai can be incredibly proud of. Before I got here, a friend of mine said to me, I love Mumbai. It's hot, noisy, chaotic, but God, I love it. And having spent a few days here, I can see why. This city grabs you by all your senses and doesn't let you go until the moment you step on the airplane at the end of your trip. It's hot, it is chaotic, it is noisy, but those are all wonderful things. It's everything a city should be. We've loved our time here in Mumbai and I cannot wait to come back. And that, my friends, is the attache guide to Mumbai. If you've been here before and feel like there's something we've missed out, or you live in this amazing city and feel like there's something that every visitor to this wonderful place needs to know, then don't forget to leave it in the comments below. And while you're there, take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We've got some amazing cities coming up in the rest of season two. But until then, Greg and I are off to play some cricket. All right, boys, let's hit some home runs. Yeah.